Welcome to the video lesson on the genetics of viruses and how viruses infect cells. Um, so, just in terms of size, if you take a look at this picture here, here we have a, bact uh, a bacterial cell, and then this whole thing is like sort of one side of an animal cell. You'll see that viruses are really, really, really small particles, much, much smaller um, than, than prokaryotic cells, which remember don't even have a nucleus, but they're extremely, extremely small. And what we're about to do in this lesson is go through their structure, the structure of viruses, um, and talk about how viruses infect cells. So viruses have two major components in their structure. Let me get the pen out. So in, they are enclosed by a protein coat. So instead of having a cell membrane, they have a protein coat. Okay, And inside that protein coat is some sort of nucleic acid. It could be single-stranded RNA, it could be single-stranded DNA, it could be double-stranded DNA, or it could be single-stranded DNA. Their nucleic acid, what they have as their, as their genetic material, can vary. We have to wait for bells, because it's during the school day. Um, so again, I'll say that again, a virus's general structure is they have a protein coat that's on their outsides, um, and then inside that protein coat is some sort of DNA or RNA. They do not have ribosomes, they don't have mitochondria, they have no organelles. They are simply a protein coat, and inside that protein coat is DNA. On their protein coat, they have something called glycoproteins. Glycoproteins are proteins with a sugar on, on top. And so if we look at this picture here, um, inside the green here, if we look at the, the genetic material, in this case it's RNA, and then um, the red here is the protein coat, um, and then these yellow and blue things are the glycoproteins. And we're going to see that the glycoproteins help viruses get into your cells or infect cells. That's the purpose of the glycoproteins, is that they help viruses get into your cells by binding to receptor molecules um, on your cells. So the genetic material of a virus can consist of four things, double-stranded DNA, or single-stranded DNA, or double-stranded RNA, or single-stranded RNA. Okay, they can be one of those four types. I think there was a question on the, um, the quiz that we took that was like talking about um, the percentages of ATs and Gs and Cs, and it wanted you to identify whether it was double-stranded DNA, single-stranded DNA, double-stranded RNA, or single-stranded RNA. And the key to that um, was that it can't be RNA because there was no U in it, and it had to be single-stranded DNA because the A's and T's weren't equal and the G's and C's weren't equal. But we'll deal with that tomorrow. But anyway, viruses can have any of those things if there's genetic material. And we also, also discussed that uh, viruses have a protein shell, okay, and that protein shell is sometimes called a capsid that encloses their genetic material, or the genome is really another word for genetic material. And it can have various structures. You can see here, here's a rod-like virus where its protein coat is rod-shaped. Um, here's an isohedral virus, it almost looks like, I don't know, some odd shape. And then this is a spherical virus where the protein coat is a circle. Um, so the, the structure of viruses can vary by what their genetic material is and what their protein coat is made out of. The rest of this lesson is going to be how viruses infect cells. Okay, In general, in this viral infection, there are two steps. So when any virus infects a cell. The first thing it must do is either enter the cell, the entire thing, or insert its DNA into the, this should say, sorry, into the host cell. This should say into the host cell right here. I can't spell, like, I don't mind, I don't have my smart board. In the host cell. Um, so they either inject their entire structure or just the DNA into the host cell. The goal, though, the goal in the first step is to get the DNA um, into the cell that they're infecting, the host cell, not the genome. I don't know what I'm talking about here, but you miss yourself. All right. Then, once the DNA is in the host cell, okay, they use the stuff of the host cell, like the ribosomes, the DNA polymerase. They 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 use the host cell's stuff, okay, um, to replicate, transcribe, and translate the DNA, their DNA, to make more viruses. So they insert their DNA and they use all the stuff that the cell provides, the ribosomes, the tRNA, all that loveliness, okay, to replicate, transcribe, and translate the viral D into proteins to make more of themselves. Okay, now, 
what's going to happen in this video is I'm, we're going to focus on step one, and then we're going to focus on step two. At the end of step one, I'm going to make a new video because it might as might go over 15 minutes a little bit. So I'm going to first do step one, then um, and then you can answer the guided questions up to step one, and then you'll get the video that goes through step two. All right. So this shows how a virus gets into the cell. So we take a look at the first step. This is a retrovirus, and we'll talk about why it's a retrovirus on the last slide. Okay, and you'll see that this is the cell here that's infecting. Okay, and if you take a look here, the retrovirus has glycoproteins that, for some magical reason, okay, can match or can bind to a receptor um, in the cell that it's trying to infect. Okay, what that does is that triggers the cell to bring it in. Through, if you remember, endocytosis. So by binding here, by having a, a glycoprotein that matches the site of this receptor in the cell that's infecting, okay, um, it can force the cell or induce the cell to bring it inside. Okay. So now if you take a look, the virus is now inside the cell that's infecting with its genetic material. And here's the genetic material, and then the ne this, this rest of this picture, which we're not going to talk about here, is the is step two. But in to get into the cell, okay, the viruses have recept have glycoproteins that can bind to receptors, okay, and um, that triggers the cell. It's infecting. It's almost like tricks it and says, "Oh, okay, I should bring you in," when really the cell should not. Um, and then the cell gets into the cell through endocytosis. Um, and it's now in the cell. Now, this gives possible ways, this way, the way that viruses get into cells gives possible ways to treat viral infections or pre to prevent viral infections from happening. Okay, if we take a look at the first picture, okay, the X is the drug. I'm sorry, no, not the X is not the drug. I'm sorry, I'm wrong. The X is not the drug. Wrong. These Y-shaped molecules are the drug. And if you see, these Y-shaped molecules are binding to the receptor. Okay? And because um, the Y-shaped are, are Y-shaped molecules are binding to the receptor, the glycoprotein on this virus, that's why there's an X, can't bind. And if it can't bind to the receptor, then it won't be able to bring it in. And then the infection can't happen. In case B, or in drug B, the drug particles, which are also Y-shaped particles, instead of binding to the receptor, okay, they're blocking the glycoprotein from binding to the receptor. Also in this case, because the glycoprotein is blocked by the drug, they won't be able to bind to the receptor, and it won't be able to get in. Now, the question is, which one of these is better? Which, which type of drug design is better? One that blocks the receptor? or one that blocks the glycoproteins? And the answer is actually this one. And the reason why that is, is that in, in the regular functioning of the cell, these receptors might do something normal. They may help the cell do something it actually needs to do. And by blocking them, yes, you are preventing the drug from going in, okay? But you're also preventing the receptors from doing what they normally do. Where in this case, you're only blocking the glycoprotein. Other things can go into these receptors. So you're not stopping like the normal function of the receptors in this case. Now, because of this receptor issue, each virus can only infect certain types of cells. So for example, if you have a cold, which is caused by a virus, you cannot give the cold to your dog. Or if your dog has a cold, okay, the dog cannot give the cold to you. Okay? And the reason why is that viruses can only infect cells that, that where the glycoprotein matches the receptor. If the glycoprotein does not match the receptor, it can infect the cell. So certain viruses can only infect, infect certain types of organisms and certain types of cells within that organism. So for example, we're going to talk about HIV. Immuno, immuno, human immunodeficiency virus, and it can only infect immune cells. Um, so each cell has a particular type of cell it can infect, and those are called host cells. And the reason why it's limited is that that glycoprotein, if we go back here, this glycoprotein, 
has to match the receptor. So we can only infect cells that have that receptor. Okay, so I am now going to upload this video, and we are now going to on to, on, on to step two, which is what the virus does once it's inside the whole cell.